do now in terms of like really getting audience reaction. And I don't, you know, like, I, I think that there's also like a mis misconception of like, oh, well, like you're putting it up and you're just like seeing what people like the comments. It's, it's not, it is not at all that, you know, we're making decisions off of the comment section. Like that is not, you know, kind of like how this process works. But I think what you're seeing is like, there are some very nuanced things around when you put something up and you, you know, kind of like do these little beta tests and then what you're looking for is you're looking for, all right, is there, um, is like, what's the profile of the audience that is kind of like aggregating around the content? What's the velocity of audience growth? What's the velocity of reach? Um, like, you know, how are they, you know, like how long are they tuning in for? These are all things that can be teased out through this like new distribution system, the digital distribution system that is incredibly valuable data that will tell you like, okay, does this have an opportunity to grow? And, you know, we believe in like, you, you do have to like put things out there in order to get that information. And um, it's important to fail fast, right? And that's a very, you know, that's a very technology sort of like um, point of view. But we do believe in that, you know, you fail fast so that you can get to the right next project. And I think that's a great thing for creators and storytellers, too, because I think that there is sort of a tendency of like from a creative standpoint, you sort of like you really want to hang on to that creative idea. And and you're like, no, 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 like that, this can work. And, you know, to us, it's like, well, you know time is something that I'm, I'm obsessed with time, right? Like I, I think that it's critically important to be like, you can't waste time. And then and I don't mean that in just like, a, you got to be efficient. I think it's really like, there's an opportunity cost for everything. The longer you spend on a creative idea that maybe doesn't resonate, that's the longer that, you know, you're not spending on the next idea that will. That's it. That Rick Rubin about... spoke about that when he, in his in on creativity, he very much spoke about holding on to that idea and then letting go of it when the time is right. What what you you just was mentioning about is almost that's the the real co creation, the real fandom, the collaboration. It's not about the fans writing the song or writing the characters or writing the script. It's about that back and forth between what's working and what's not working and the right fans mm -hmm. finding the right creators rather than this kind of, you've had a problem with that in the past, Jeremy, about musicians kind of giving the baseline to somebody in the audience just because they're a fan. It's not exactly how it's evolving, is it? I, yeah, I got a question for you, John, related to that, like and set the tone of like I, over the last two or three years, I thought it was like really interesting to give people pieces of IP to let them do their own creations. But I think people largely want to sit and be entertained. They don't want to <laughs> yeah. necessarily do the creative piece of that. You know, not all of them, right? You have creators and you have people that love stories and, and that sort of thing. So Mark mentioned the idea of like uh, fan interaction and community involvement and that sort of thing. Again, you guys are very tech forward. What are you guys thinking about moving into the future to create that engagement? Are you thinking about any kind of real time like interaction with fans are you doing like you know live stream are you what yeah what's what's happening john what are you what are you doing yeah i mean so um so yes i mean and, and we've done different so different flavors of that so yeah and and just that like when we look at community participation um fan engagement there is there is like basically a spectrum of ways fans can get you know can in, engage and it's it's everything from you know to your point it's everything from as, as sort of simple as like a, a you know it can be a comment or or a share is sort of baseline version and that's still engagement um to commenting on narrative to actually we we've done uh we did it with the gimmicks and then we did it with a, another um uh, another project called space jump um, where we um, let the fans, it, it's basically, it was a kind of like choose your own adventure esque, where the fans got to uh, vote and then the vote would impact the narrative of the, of the subsequent episode. Um, and so we've done stuff like that. And then I would say probably, and then the sort of the highest level form of that is we've done several things around fan fiction and 
letting letting the community um, you know create their own characters. We did that with the gimmicks, and and we did, you know, and, and I think you're right. Like I I think there there's like that universe of people that want to participate to that level is, is probably, a, it's probably a fairly limited universe um, because that, you know, that takes, that takes a fair amount of work um, to, to create your own character. And we did it with the gimmicks um, where with people had their, their, um, their, uh, you know, their, their NFTs, they could, they could basically write backstories for their NFTs uh, and then we had a, we basically built a, we built a social layer for the gimmicks um, on, you know, on the, on, on chain. And that social layer allowed people to vote. And then the person, you know, that, that got the most votes for their, their character, then they won, they basically won a cameo appearance in an episode. So then if you, you know, if, if you were, if the character you created got the, you know, was the most popular, then you actually got to voice your own character that you wrote the story for. In an episode, which was, you know, that was hugely popular, partly because, you know, it's it's uh now all of a sudden that that person, you know, gets IMDb credit in a you know in a Milo Kunis produced you know series, and you know that that's a big deal. So that that was popular. Um, but what we did, you know, did learn is what you're saying. It's like there there are only you know only at, you know X number of people that will sort of like lean in to to do something to that level. And our first version of that was very, you know, I'll say analog, but it was, it was like we had created basically a wiki and you had to go in and sort of write, write your own story from scratch. Um, and then we, we did the same thing for Space Junk, but we actually then brought uh, AI into that process. And so we, we created a character in Space Junk. There's a character called Welbecca and she's a, she's a wellness robot. Um, and, and so what happens is, um, what happened with space junk is that it, same thing. If you, you know, you had your token and you wanted to write your, your, uh, you had your NFT and you wanted to write your, your backstory, you would go to Welbecca and basically that was, it was all powered through, um, generative AI. Uh, she would, she would then help you write, write your character story. Um, and the reason we did that is, and, and we actually saw a, a much higher level of conversion or engagement into that process, mostly because you weren't, you know, the other thing we learned, and I think we, we knew this already, but starting from a white, you know, like a blank, blank page is very different than starting from like prompts. And, and I think this is partly why, you know, G, you know, GPT, chat GPT has been so popular because it's like you put in prompts and then it gives you you know, then the output's there and then you can modify the output. You can, you know, you can take it, leave it, take pieces of it, whatever you want to do. But at least with prompts, it's giving you the starting point. It's giving you a framework. It's giving, you know, it's it's probably on average, at least getting you 50% of, you know, 50% of the way of where you want to go. And, you know, something getting you 50% of the way there, that that sort of quickly and easily, that, that's valuable. And, and so that's what we saw with, you know, with, with, with space junk and, and uh, yeah. And, you know, so I, I think we're, we're, we're going to continue to do more things like that that involve the community in different ways. I think, you know, again, like that, that was our first, that was our first um, attempt at using generative AI on the community facing side, because before we were using it just, you know, on the production side. Uh, and so that was the first time we used it directly with, with, con, you know, consumers and, and fans. And I think we'll do, we'll do more of that because we do, you know, we just, I think fundamentally believe that especially younger audiences and also agree with you. Like, I think there, there's sometimes people just do want Like, I think there's a group of, of fans and consumers that just want to watch and it's a lean back experience and that's, that's cool. And then there's a group that want to, you know, participate, engage in some way. And I think, you know, what you see happening with gaming and what, you know, gaming so popular um, and, you know, and, and why YouTube is the largest, you know, streaming platform in, in the world that I think sort of tells you that, okay, yeah, there's, there's this sort of like new, you know, these younger generations are, are looking to sort of, you know, consume, you know, engage in, in different ways. And so we'll, you know, we'll, We'll definitely continue to um, experiment with that, but I think at the same time, we'll always run a balance of like we believe that you know at least our approach is that we want to start with character again. Going back, like character and story is is the foundation, and that's the starting point. And then from there, things can sort of like 
you know, grow or, or emerge um, versus I know there were some projects that were all about like, you know, it's going to be a hundred percent, you know, bottom, you know, like community up. And well, I'll, you know, I'll say like, I, I won't say that that can't work, but I think that's, that's a tougher, if you, you know, if the goal is to create a story world that's got franchise potential, I think that that could be, you know, a tougher, tougher way to do it. Man, that's a theme that runs through like literally every discussion we have this, this trade-off between hierarchical and emergent systems and like where the handoff is uh, in the benefit of those. Mark, uh, I know your mind's too. And what's, uh, what, what questions are swirling through your head? The, the first question is, you seem like you're both coming from a, a very good place and it seems very, very genuine. And, and, and I, you have experience of creators and writers who have been crushed by the system or can't get into the system. Um, but we also spoke about, you mentioned gaming a minute ago, a lot of our shows, we've spoken about the metaverse and and brands like to get their hands into the pie, don't they? So have you have you had conversations with brands? Are you having conversations with the brands about doing this for them? Because they, I mean, a lot of the cartoons that I watched, the animation I watched, I, you could imagine a big brand sticking their kind of personality onto it. And brought to you by a sugary cereal, and it's after. <laughs> exactly. yeah. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. What are you guys doing on the brand side, if anything? Um, you know, I think the benefit of um, the the benefit of what what we sort of like do is because there is, you know, these creators they have uh, a, a certain sort of like personality in a certain lane that that I think you know is the authenticity. It's like such a you know kind of big word that is used a lot in these like you know, influencer social media content spaces, but there is sort of like in like an authentic lane for each and every single one of these like characters and brands of like, you know, content. And then there's, you know, brands of products that really kind of like make sense and would, you know, really authentically work. So you take a look at something like a Steven and Parker, like how that's really working is like, yes, there've been sort of discussions around like, you know, with brands or like with certain episodes in which maybe it makes sense for, you know, Steven to want to visit a certain store because that's something that he, you know, like just organically like would do and participate. Like Halloween was just like a big holiday, right? And so, you know, he's got, you know, certain costumes that he really loves he's got certain characters that he himself as a character is like you know obsessed with right so he loves dinosaurs and so there's like a lot of like dinosaur sort of like content that's embedded in there and so there's very specific organic types of stuff that you can that that lives in his world that he as a character um you know participates in and those are the kinds of like brands and those are the kinds of like you know potential collaborations that makes sense and actually makes you know like potential like you know like actual partnerships work you would never see you, you would never see sort of like the you know Stephen and parker world you know talk about i don't know cars it, it's like it, it just wouldn't make any sense right like that he's he's like a eight-year-old kid right like what does he love he loves roblox he loves batman he loves chibos he loves dino nuggies like those are kind of like the categories in which he you know kind of like lives in so it's almost like the the content has to live, I think, for for a bit and kind of stew for a bit before like some of these ideas come out. Instead of saying, "Yeah, hey, I'm a gummy bear brand, and I want to give you five hundred thousand bucks. What can you do for me?" And it's like it that doesn't normally work as well. I mean, the money's great, but it's like right. the executions yeah. tend to fail, right? Right, yeah. and that I mean, like that's really I think that's kind of like that area of like, well, then that would just be an advertisement right like then you might as well just make an ad and you know that's just completely about the brand and it would be on brand and that would but these are kind of like collaborations where where it's like hey like this is genuinely something that this character or this world would like participate in like steven's older brother parker is a musician right like he you know, loves music, he has his own band. And so there's like a whole ecosystem of things that make sense for Parker that is different than for Stephen. And that's really kind of like how we view this, um, we review this world and like what kind of collaborators make sense. And, you know, and that's different for other projects, like, you know, like uh, 
a gimmicks would be different than like a space junk, right? And so these are all kind of like those those are the decisions in which you sort of would make to um, to bring brands on board into the experience. Because at the end of the day, you wouldn't, you know, we're we're really about creating franchise IP and and fandom is incredibly important and community is incredibly important and their, you know, audiences are really, really smart, right? And and it's not even so much that they mind being advertised to, but you just have to be authentic about it, right? Like they're like, okay, like we get it. They're sponsorship type of like thing. But you'll hear about it if it's like an off base one too. You'll hear that's it. Right. Yeah. They'd be yeah. like, what are you doing? Like that's crazy. So <laughs> So I think that's sort of like, you know, the, the North Star at the end of the day, no matter what, is really just about like, okay, well, what is your story? What are the characters? And, and what is like, you have to have a very firm grasp of like, what to do stand for. And you have to really be authentically sort of like focused on that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, I was, I was kind of actually thinking about looking at the, the viewing figures on YouTube that in the millions and millions, how maybe a brand could actually diversify into making its own IP into mm -hmm. these short animations that would act as yeah an advert essentially at the beginning, but it actually becomes a creative IP that they could use sure. to, to create a personality yeah. around the brand rather than being adverts placed into existing IP, new That's right. brand yeah. IP, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been a it's been an awesome awesome chat i i you know want to um kind of think about gracefully landing uh the plane of this uh, of this episode that is organically sponsored by story and character our two sponsors today story and character <laughs> um <laughs> let me ask you what's let me ask each of you this this question if i could um what well, let's see Luisa. i'll start with you what is one thing you want creators to know about uh, your organization and what you guys are doing? Um, I, I think that, what is one thing that, gosh, that's a good question. I think we want, you know, creators and storytellers to know that we are, you know, they are the lifeblood of really, you know, the, 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 what we do in the ecosystem, right? Like we're, we started the company really in support of, trying to get as many different stories and as many um you know different ideas out there and and so that's really kind of like the the north star of what what this organization is about and and what we want to do is like we're really trying to you know create an ecosystem to help creators succeed and build long-term um, economic viability you know for for themselves and create ip um, and that they need to sort of like think about, um, I encourage creators to kind of like change the lens of how they think about um, the, the, the relationship in that, you know, it's to think about their, in, their creative endeavors, almost kind of like their own sort of like entrepreneurial creative endeavors. Like a lot of sort of like the relationship of how traditionally they, like a lot of creators and a lot of storytellers have thought about it, is like, okay, well, I have this creative idea, I'm gonna pitch. And so, and then I'm gonna sell my idea. So like, like your ideas become this like product that you're selling to someone else. And I think like the system in which we, really kind of like think about and set up is like you're not selling us your idea you are you know becoming a you know co-producer and you're becoming a partner and this is an entrepreneurial venture in which we do together which just fundamentally changes the way that you know because then your the creators are empowered right like they have more say they have more but it's it's more say but then it's also more responsibility so it's like double edged Hundred percent, John. I'm gonna. That's a great, great way to answer that, Louisa. John, I'm gonna flip it to you. What's one thing you want audiences to know and understand about what you guys are doing? <clears throat> yeah, very good. That's a good question, also. Um, yeah. So I, I think for you know for audiences is that you know we're you know we, we're tr you know our our you know our mission is to produce, you know, characters, characters and, and story worlds that are, you know, 
relevant to relevant to them um and and you know original original stuff with with creators that you know are you know super you know super talented great storytellers um a lot a lot of these folks you know it is fans you you probably you probably already know in some way like you might you might follow them you know it's it's not it's not an animated version of them yet uh, or an animated series, but you might, you know, follow, you might like that creator storyteller already, um, you know, on, on, you know, YouTube or social media in some way. Um, and, and I think, you know, just, just, yeah, like, like we, you know, really want to, you know, create a, you know, what I, what I would call sort of like the, a new generation of, you know, a new generation of, you know, animated icons that are things that, you know, that, we, you know, and this will sort of date, this will date me. Um, but, you know, I, I grew up a child of Saturday morning cartoons and I, I know how indelible those characters were for me, you know, growing up and, and beyond. Um, and, you know, and, and they were so, you know, kind of like relevant to me. And, and I think, you know, we absolutely understand, you know, we do a lot of, we produce a lot with, with, you know, creators that are, you know, gen, you know, they're, they're gen, they're, you know, younger generations. It's like, you know, uh, Gen Z, uh, you know, gen, gen alpha, um, i you know, millennial creators that, that are, are, have ideas and stories that, uh, you know, we think are going to, you know, resonate with, with these younger audiences, um, in, in a way, you know, and, and be available in a way that they, you know, it, it be accessible where they want to access the characters and stories and be accessible in a way that they want to, um, you know, uh, engage with the characters and stories. And so that's, that's very important to us. And, and I think with that comes, you know, again, like we're obviously biased, but we think that's, you know, the, the few, yeah, we think there's a ton of potential. We think the future is really bright there to create, you know, this next generation of these, like, you know, these iconic, iconic characters. Um, I like the thoughtfulness in, in the last bit of your answer there with accessibility and, and the ways of engagement. That's like something that isn't thought or wasn't traditionally thought of in like the behemoth system. They would just put something in place and like fire it through the, through the channel and, and, you know, hope yes. for the best, but that's, but that's awesome. Thank you guys for that. Brute, and, um, brute, brute, force. brute force. That's right. That's yeah. right. Uh, Mark, you want to, you, should we wrap with the handoff question? Do we want to do a, do the quick handoff and then have these guys leave one for, uh, for our next guest? Yep. I just want to add my, my piece of hope for that. It's come full circle with me. I like John grew up watching Saturday morning television and now I sit with my children and I watch cartoons and cartoons are, a huge, huge part of our collective culture that they, yeah. they, they, they are, you, you can't escape them. They're part of you when you're growing up and now when you're an adult. And um, I'm very hopeful to see how this tech kind of technology, uh, how my children embrace it and, and what kind of cartoons they will watch based on this. So I'm very hopeful for that. Thank you. Um, our question was, about quantum we've been in quantum season a lot recently we've been speaking to a lot of um, very very smart people about things we don't really understand and her question for you was if you're thinking about quantum po well we were speaking about post-quantum cryptography so have you thought about quantum computers in any way either of you i'm oh, sorry louise <laughs> <laughs> and if, if the answer is no that's cool I need more. Co I need more coffee. Hold on. <laughs> well, yeah, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Quantum mechanics. Well, well there's a thing called superposition, Wait. and we'll start there. And right now, <laughs> right. Oh no. Uh, and 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 uh, see, this would be that a great beer with some butthead scene, Jeremy. And if and if the answer's no, maybe it'd be better if we could ask you to leave a question for our next guests, who are also working in AI. But I think they're more on the design of the language models part of this. Um, so yeah, any question on the impact of emerging technologies on business and culture that springs to mind? Maybe we should have two questions, Jeremy, one each. <laughs> so I will say, I don't know very much about quantum. I've, I did have a conversation with somebody who was in 
that space and I legitimately walked away with the conversation of like, wow, like my, my head hurts. <laughs> so, yep, we, we um, you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think question, so, um, question for your uh, next guest. Um, I am fascinated by, you know, kind of like language, um, kind of language in, in what is happening in the AI space around like language and language models. Uh, I'm really interested in, in the question of like how language models are reconciling between just kind of like, um, fundamentally, like there's different cultures that are actually driven by the language or, or, you know, kind of both ways, right. Culture and language it's like very much intertwined. And so, you know, coming like my background is like, I, I, I am, you know, like I was born in Taiwan and uh, I moved, in, you know, here when I was very young and I am bilingual and I have seen sort of like both culturally and language speaking, like the, the mesh of cultures is just, you know, very near and dear to me. Um, and I'm fascinated and I'm interested in like, how are they reconciling between how uh, like the, the, cult the language culture and and how do you really sort of get to a point in which you know language can be sort of like universal in terms of like kind of like being you know translated between the two cultures to really drive more sort of like common grounded understanding um and and you know how ai is really kind of helping power that fabulous i love that i love that that's a that's perfectly landed at the intersection of culture and tech great job sure has been <laughs> um well awesome well thank you so much for for spending your time with us thanks for thanks for building what you're building um mark and i will be in touch soon to pitch our show idea yeah and um <laughs> well we actually did a uh so back in in the musically days we actually did a a, a live sh the when i mentioned that poppy the poppy character uh, we did a live stream uh version of the show uh so you like the you kind of think it was it was basically like Space Ghost Coast to Coast. It was like a variety show, but it was live. Um, and it was live animation. And it was at the time, it was one of the top top shows on, on Musical.ly. Wow. Um, yeah, so we definitely, yeah, it's, uh, we, we, we're familiar. We're familiar with it, so. <laughs> super cool, super cool. Yeah. Well, uh, well, thanks for, thanks for hanging. Thanks for um, breaking this stuff down for us. Guys, thank you. thank you for listening. And uh, for more information about us, you can check us out at thinkingonpaper.xyz. Mark's going to tell you about the book club. We actually are engaging in the original technology, pages, words, stories, characters too sometimes. And we read these books together. And yeah, tell them what's up, Mark. Right, I'll show them if they're watching me. Yeah, so we we have a book club where we read books. Rather, we're, we're the the rebellion to the fifteen minute book summary. We are the antithesis of the let's all read a hundred books in a year and learn nothing and remember even less. Um, so we spend one week on each chapter of a book, and we've actually just released our next book, which will be starting in two weeks. Nexus by Yuval Noah Harari: um, A Brief History of Information Networks from the Stone Age to AI. So if you want to read it with us, it'll be live. So we'll share some links, go to thinkingonpaper.xyz, um, buy the book and come read it with us. Be curious, stay disruptive, keep thinking on paper.